Welcome back everybody to the Brew Nub channel where we're going to take your recipe kits from start to finish. Now I'm Mike. And I'm Joey. And today we're actually going to do a Oktoberfest recipe kit from Crafter Brew. So let's go ahead and get right in and see what's inside. Starting off, we have our hops. Our specialty grains, our dry malt extract, our yeast, our sanitizer, and the last, our cheese rag. So if any of these are missing beforehand, just make sure to contact wherever you bought it and make sure you have all your ingredients because all these will be necessary for you to be able to brew a beer. So besides that, you'll also need the following. A one gallon carboy with the bung, an airlock either being a two piece or a three piece, a thermometer either digital or glass, a racking cane with tubing or a siphon and tubing. Joey, what else will we need? So we're gonna need a 12 quart stock pot, a strainer, funnel, a sprayer, and a spatula. All right, now that we know everything that we'll actually need, let's start getting the cleaning and sanitizing going. And just so you guys are aware, this will not actually be in part of the video as of right now. We're actually going to have a separate video to go a little bit further into depth. So once that is completed, we'll make sure to link it in this video. All right, Joey, let's get this ready. All right, now that we're back from cleaning and sanitizing all our equipment, we're going to get into the brewing process. Now, Joey, do you know the four basic ingredients you need to actually make beer? Oh, yeah. So we need water, yeast, hops, and grains. That's 100% correct. That is the four ingredients that you'll need to actually make beer. So getting into the actual brewing... The first thing you want to do, you want to take your actual stock pot and you will fill it with a little over a gallon of water. Now, Joey, can you explain why you would want to fill over a gallon of water? Oh, yeah. So the reason why is because water evaporates. Now, we chose to use spring water. And the reason because of that is tap water. Some people say that it will actually make your beer taste a little off. So we just went ahead, bought some spring water, filled it up, ready to go. So as you're waiting for your water to go to the temperature of 155, you should start prepping your specialty grains inside of the cheese sock. So Joey, do you want to go ahead and start getting that ready? Oh yeah. All right, so now we're going to start the steeping process. We have our cheese sock, some grains, and we're only going to use specialty grains they do not have starch. Those are the only ones you want to steep. Um, the steeping process, where it adds color, flavoring, and the sugars in the beer. At what temperature again was it at, Joey? You want to make sure that we start to steep, steeping at 155. And how long is that supposed to be? 20, 20 minutes. Yep, 100%. Alright, as you can see, I have already cut this open. So Joey, can you please stretch that out a bit? So the reason he's doing that, if you don't, your grains are going to get everywhere. So let's just go ahead Yep, and pour this in. And there we go. Let's give that a good tie. And then either get a clip or go ahead and get a toothpick. The reason you want to do that is when you actually place this in, you can place this through the cheesecloth and have it right here so that it doesn't fall in. You can let it fall in, but why would you want to have to dig it out? So whatever you can use, use it. All right, now that we're at that 155, we've actually already dunked the specialty grains in. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna give it a good lift up and down. And then we're gonna tie this off. And let that finish that 20 minute mark. All right, so we're now we're done with the steeping process and we're gonna make sure that we do not squeeze the cheese sock because we don't wanna release any extra tannins into the wart. 
and the wort is the unfermented beer. All right, so the next step after that, we're going to turn this up a little bit, and we're going to get this to the boiling temperature, which is? It's 212. Correct. And once we're at that 212, we're going to take it off the burner, and then we're going to drop, add our dry malt extract. All right, now that we have our wort up to the 212, we're actually going to add this dry malt extract to the pot. Now, Joey, can you give that a quick cleaning with a sanitizer? Sure can. Cool. So now we're going to add our malt extract, like I said. And Joey, what's one thing you want to make sure you're doing? You want to make sure you scrape the bottom because you don't want it to stick. Exactly. So this will start to clump. So do this slowly and make sure you continuously stir and do and make sure that you scrape the bottom so it doesn't stick. Now once that's done stirring, you're actually going to let that sit for an hour. And once we come back, we'll go on to the next phase. Alright, so just something really brief I forgot to mention right before we walked away from our hour break. Um, you actually, from what this kit offers in hops, you want to put the first half of your hops into the boiling wort. And then about two minutes before the actually 60 minute mark goes, you want to throw in your other half. So another, a few other things you, I also want to mention is make sure you're t checking your temperature through that whole hour. You know, maybe every 10, 15 minutes just to make sure that you're staying right around that boil point. So as we're getting closer to that 15 minute mark, you should actually start your ice bath, just getting everything prepped. So we're gonna go ahead, start the ice bath, and we're also gonna start cleaning off the gear that we'll need once the ice bath is done. So Joey, do you wanna start spraying off the gear we need? Yeah, let's do it. All right, All right now that our ward has boiled for over an, for an hour, we're actually gonna bring it over to our ice bath. Now what you're going to want to do is bring your wort down to 75 degrees. And the reason for that is when you pitch your yeast, it's going to make sure that yeast isn't being killed off. So once we finish getting the wort down to 75, we'll come back and show you the next steps. All right, now that we cooled our wort down to 75 degrees, we're going to go strain it into the one gallon carboy. Before we do that though, we're going to make sure that we sanitize everything. So let's go ahead. Joey, can you sanitize the funnel? Yep. Next he's going to sanitize the strainer. Next the one gallon carboy. Give it a good spray on the inside. Give a good spray around. And then a little bit on the, yep. On the rim. Right around the rim. All right. Very cool. Give that a good shake. All right. And should I just yep pour dump that it out? down on the yep or whatever you have? Okay, just so you're aware, you can see the sanitizer in here, but you don't have to worry. Um, you're able to actually pour in, and it should not cause any issue. So, Joey, let's go ahead. We're gonna get our funnel. Okay. We're gonna place that on there. All right. Then we're gonna throw that on top. Now, hopefully, Joey can pour this in without burning me. I hope so. <laughs> now this is exactly why you want to strain, as you can see here. This is all from the bittering hops, and you definitely don't want anybody drinking that. So let's set that aside, and look at that. It looks like we have just about a gallon like we were aiming for. So just to go back to what we were saying in the beginning, that's the reason why you're pouring in 
over a gallon. All right, now for the next step, we're going to take our yeast, we're going to cut it open, and once you place it inside, that's actually called pitching the yeast. Now once we get that in there, we're going to shake that up for one minute, and that process is called aeration. What that's actually going to do, it's going to multiply the yeast, and that's what's going to make your beer. So once that is done, Alexa, timer one minute. One minute, starting now. So as he's shaking that up, you do not want to go over a minute because that would be, that would cause oxidation, which is something you do not want. This is a workout. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I had Joey do it. Obviously, he's the muscles in this whole operation. <laughs> Reminds me of like a shake weight. <laughs> <laughs> so while Joey's doing that, I'm going to head and I'm going to start cleaning the rest of what we need. And once we get to that point, I'll explain a little bit more details of what that is. My arms are giving out. <laughs> Keep going, my man. Now, I'm going to... Alexa, stop timer. All right, we're good. All right. All right, cool. All right, so that's ready to go. Uh, I'm going to ask our cameraman if he can send us over the tubing with the white on there. We're going to clean off our bung. We're going to clean this off. And get our blow-off valve ready to go. Can I see this? We're going to spray our tubing, make sure that we're clean. Making this sanitized. Let's do it up here because I'm making a mess everywhere and my wife will probably kill me for it. There we go. All right. This goes on the sun, right? Yep. So we place that in here. We're going to take our sanitizer. We're going to dump it in there. Actually, could you fill this up a little bit more? Sure can. No, 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 with this. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, want, we want to make sure we're using our sanitizer. There we go. Fill this up a bit more. There we go. So what that's going to allow, this is going to allow the CO2 to come out. And the reason you want that, if we actually close this, it could potentially blow off. That's why you have the blow off valve. And if that happened, then your beer will be exposed. All right, now that you have your blow-off valve set up, you're actually gonna want that to sit for three days. Now, during that three-day process, you're going to notice some bubbling in there, which is the CO2 being released from your wart. Can you hear me? One more time, my cameraman. Thank you. So after the three days have passed, and you wanna make sure that you're keeping that in a dark, cool room, not letting any sunlight exposed you're going to want to fill this up with some sanitizer then replace the tubing and pop that right on from there you're going to let the rest of the two weeks go past so after that process is done you'll actually want to get set up for the bottling now we don't have a video for that right now but we will set one up in the future so that you guys can see what that process is so I want to thank you very much for joining us again. Hopefully you found some very useful information from it, and we'll see you next time. Please make sure to like and subscribe. That's going to help us grow. And if you see every, anything that we've said that's wrong, please call us out right in the comments. We want to make sure that we're doing this correct. We can only get better by learning and by people calling us out. So we'll talk to you next time we're here. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you.